When a cell divides, the position of the mitotic spindle helps determine the fate of its daughter cells. Spindle positioning is controlled by the microtubule-based motor dynein and a conserved ternary complex that, in human cells, consists of the proteins NUMA, LGN and G-alpha, as Pierre Guernsey from the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne explains. From loss of function or reduction of function studies in C. elegans, it was clear that the ternary complex was really needed uh, to put dynein at the cell membrane or at the cell cortex. But what was not clear is whether it had other functions besides delivering and maintaining dynein at that position. Guernsey and his colleagues Sachin Kotak and Coralie Busso set out to investigate the relationship between dynein and the ternary complex in HeLa cells, which, when plated onto fibronectin-coated cover slips, align their mitotic spindle parallel to the underlying substratum. If you deplete or overexpress ternary complex components, you basically interfere and nearly randomize spindle positioning. So instead of having the spindle parallel to the substratum, we now adopt various and almost random orientations. Live imaging experiments, however, revealed that depleting or overexpressing ternary complex components misorients a spindle in two different ways. If you deplete uh, ternary complex components, which results in the severe depletion of dynein from the cell membrane, then basically the spindle is extremely still. And we think that this leads to spindle positioning defects. In contrast, if you overexpress ternary complex components, we have now excess dynein at the cell membrane, and the spindle basically moves around like crazy in the cell, instead of being nicely and gently positioned parallel to the substratum. The spindle oscillations induced by overexpressing ternary complex proteins were dynein dependent, as depleting the dynein associated factor P150 glued abolished these abnormal spindle movements. We've done another experiment where instead of overexpressing wild type G alpha, we overexpress a version of G alpha that's defective for the side that normally mirisolates this protein. And as a result, uh, we trap dynein not at the cell membrane, but elsewhere in the cell. And in this case, we see that oscillations are abolished and basically the spindle is still, showing that basically dining in, the, in this context really needs to be at the cell membrane for it to have an impact. Kotak et al. obtained similar results in C. elegans embryos, where overexpression of the LGN homologue GPR1 enhanced dynein's recruitment to the cell cortex where it induced excess spindle oscillations and worm embryos expressing a non-meristoilated version of G-alpha showed a decrease in cortical dynein and an incorrectly positioned spindle. So the experiment demonstrated that dynein was needed at the membrane to somehow mediate efficient pulling, we think, on astral microtubules to position the spindle. But now we wanted also to ask whether dynein and associated components would be sufficient for generating pulling forces at the cell membrane. The researchers therefore wanted to devise a way of targeting the dynein complex to the plasma membrane in the absence of the NUMA LGN G alpha ternary complex. Dynein is known to associate in some way with NUMA, a large coil coil protein whose C terminal domain interacts with both LGN and microtubules. Through several approaches, including co immunoprecipitation experiments, Kotak et al. found that dynein interacts with the N terminal portion of NUMA. We took this centromere segment of NUMA and fused it to a CAX box uh, to basically drive the localization to the plasma membrane. And so in this way, we were able to drag most of dynein to that location. And again, when we looked at that experiment uh, using live imaging, we saw that just like overexpression of the ternary complex members, uh, overexpression of this N-terminal NUMA CACs resulted in this crazy movement of the spindle. These movements were done independent because they were suppressed by depletion of, for instance, the dynactin component P150 glued. 
But the key experiment is that then when we abolish ternary complex function, for instance, by adding protosis toxin, these crazy movements of the spindle were still present. So this basically demonstrated that the sole presence of dynein and, of course, of dynein interacting components, but not the ternary complex, can make the spindle move in this exaggerated manner in this experimental setup and presumably also position it correctly in the quote-unquote wild-type condition. Kotak et al.'s results suggest that, rather than directly regulating the spindle's position, the ternary complex's primary role is to localise dynein to the right place at the right time. But how that is achieved, I think, is not clear. So some of the next steps will be to try to understand uh, how these components are regulated in human cells, but also in C. elegans. And another next step, of course, would be also to try to understand the mechanisms by which dynein exerts its impact on spindle positioning, whether the presence of excess dynein or the lack of dynein has an impact uh, on the dynamics of astral microtubers that abut the cell cortex, or whether perhaps dynein simply acts here as a motor protein. That's another thing that we're interested in. In the meantime, you can learn more about how cortical dynein is critical for proper spindle positioning in human cells in the paper by Kotak et al., published in the October 1st, 2012 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.